بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد. Okay, so we're gonna look at the ranks of the books of hadith uh, according to Shah Walilah Dehlavi رحمه الله. تبقات كتب الحديث the ranks okay the different ranks. So he says اعلم أنه لا سبيل لنا إلى معرفة الشرائع والأحكام إلا خبر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. Okay, we don't, we can't know the Sharia. Uh, the Sharia has been translated in different ways. Um, someone say an ethical law, someone say a God's law, and so forth. Okay, so there's no way for us to know the Sharia and its ruling except through the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Right. So we only know through the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We've already talked about a theological question which I'm happy to share a document with you on of whether we can know something is right and wrong without a prophet. Right? So can Zubair be held ad- accountable in the akhirah, in the afterlife uh, for something that he did right or wrongly? Right? Say he did something wrong based on his reasoning. Or does he need to know that a prophet said this is wrong <coughs> and then he can be held accountable? Okay, and this is a discussion that the Ash'aris and Maturidis have also had as well. So, for example, for practical purposes, someone might be living in the jungle, right? And they've never heard of Islam, right? They might have heard that this is something that some people do in some part of the world and they live their life and they die. Well, can they be held accountable? Okay, so we're not going to go into this, but generally speaking, the Maturidis would say, <coughs> that no, um, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam comes. Um, um, if you well, they say you can rationally work it out. Right? You can still be held accountable rationally by working out whether something is right or wrong. This is based on the Quran. There's a discussion on this that Allah says in the Quran um, that He doesn't punish the people until He sends a prophet to them. But then they understand this in different ways. But we're not going to go into that. The they say that, yeah. Okay, illa khabar Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi khalafin masalih. Now we talk about maslaha, beneficial purposes. Remember, the beneficial purposes, do we know that from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? No. That's, we've tried, we've reasoned, and we've said that looking at the sunnah, looking at the corpus of the Quran, we know that, for example, being just is a good thing. The Quran tells us that, but this general idea of the sharia is what? Being just uh, and so forth, yeah? But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hasn't told us explicitly, if you like, uh, because these are values, what ought to be achieved in the Sharia. Okay? فَإِنَّهَا قَدْ تُدْرَكُوا بِالْتَجْرُبَةِ وَالنَّذْرِ الصَّادِقِ وَالْحَذْرِ وَالنَّهْرِ ذَلِكِ Because you know the beneficial purposes of the Sharia, the values of the Sharia, the ethical values, they come from uh, reflection, they come from reasoning, moral reasoning, and these sort of things. Okay? وَلَا سَبِيلَ لَنَا إِلَى مَعْرِفَ أَخْبَارِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ now we only know from the Prophet ﷺ when the riwayat, when the tradition reaches us from the Prophet Yeah. So Mawlana says so and so that I heard from my teacher who heard from this teacher who heard from this teacher. Tabi'in, 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 sahaba, and then the Prophet ﷺ. So the only way we know is through the riwayat of the Prophet ﷺ. So if every time there's a person in each chain, they, they've met each other, they've studied from each other. This is why in our tradition, it's very, very important that you learn from reputable teachers. Yeah? I know we have modern technology today where you can learn online. It's good, alhamdulillah, there's benefit in it. I'm not saying it's wrong or you shouldn't do it. But the suhbah <coughs> is very, very important. Okay. Um, so, سَوَاءٌ كَانَتْ مِنْ لَفْزِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَوْ كَانَتْ حَدِيثِ مَوْقُوفَةٌ so whether we hear it from the Prophet or whether the Sahaba say that they heard it from the Prophet or from the Tabi'een, okay? Um, and he says that in such a way that um, it's impossible for them to get together and have fabricated it, right? They've spread all over the Muslim world. There's no way possible that they would have come together, had a meeting and fabricated something against the Prophet Okay? Um, so sometimes you have a hadith where the Sahaba says uh, says that he heard it from the Prophet Or the Tabi'een 
says that he heard it from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he doesn't mention the Sahaba, but we know that he must have learned it from a Sahaba. He, sometimes that's implicit. Sometimes you need to work it out. Okay. Um, now Shah Walulah says, uh, and this is where I mentioned something before about his focus on famous books. Yeah. Uh, La sabila ilayhi fi yawmina. The two day, we, the only way we can come to know hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam illa tatabu al kutub that we have books. Yeah. So when I talked about this controversy about him, rahimahullah, saying that we should only focus on books that are written, we don't need to look into uh, the chain of narration. This is this is where this controversy comes about. Okay. Al mudawana fi ilm al hadith. Like all of these books are written. He's basically saying you've got it all collected now. It's all there. You don't really need to go into ilm of rijal. And this is one of the arguments some people make against him that because of this, because of his view, the subcontinent um, didn't focus so much on this. They just focused on books that were famous. Whereas people say you should continually look into the science. Right? فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَجُوا الْيَوْمْ رِوَايَةَ يَأْتَمِلُ عَلَيْهَا غَيْرَ مُدَوَّنَةٍ Because um, you'll find all of this in books now. Right? You don't need to worry about it. The books have been accepted. They've reached shuhrat, then they become very famous, so that's enough, okay? Um, and then he says that in terms of books that are famous, uh, there, are f there, there are four levels. There are four levels. This is according to Shah Walula Dehlawi, rahimahullah, okay? وَذَٰلِكَ لِأَنَّ أَعْلَىٰ أَقْصَامُ الْحَدِيثِ كَمَا عَرَفْتَ فِي مَا سَبَقَ مَا ثَبَرَ فِي التَّوَاتُرِ وَأَجْمَعَةِ الْعُمَّةِ عَلَىٰ قُبُولِ عَمَلَ بِهِ You've done about, you talked about tawatur before. Tawatur is mass transmission. So if a hadith is mass transmission, uh, many people transmitted it throughout the generations, then we accept it as a, uh, it's actually using aqidah. Yeah. Remember, you can only base your aqidah on something that you know is certain. And there are very few things that in our sharia have that level of proof. So that's why it's very difficult to call someone a non-believer and so forth, unless they refute these you know, like you learn in Madrasa, Amantu Billahi wa Malaikatihi, like you have to believe in Allah, you have to believe in the angels. Believe in the angels, every, every Muslim to become a Muslim has to believe in the angels. As an example, let me take that as an example. But if someone says, I don't believe, I believe in angels, but I don't believe they have this ability or that ability, that doesn't make them a kafir. Because Ijmal and generally is what? You need to believe in angels. Now, all the tafsil of, I don't believe this type of angel and that type of angel, doesn't make a person a kafir. Because those things are not going to be from Tawatul. They're going to be from types, different types of hadith. Someone denies it, you can say oh, he's a mubtade because the hadith is ahad or so forth. But you can't say to the person, Bai, because you don't believe this angel has this, Allah has given him this strength and you don't believe in it because the hadith mentioned this. Like, no, unless it's Tawatul. So we, when we say, Amantu billahi wa malaikati wa kutubihi wa rusuli wa yawm al akhir, these are ijmali things. Like you just believe in him generally. Like to believe in the akhir. Right? To believe in the afterlife, well, yawm al -akhir, to believe on, on the day of judgment is a point of faith. It's, it, it's the tawatu. It's mutawate to believe on the day of judgment. All the details, that's fine. You can, that's secondary. That's sec it's not primary part of belief. It comes secondary. It's, it's really important that people understand these things. Our teacher, he says this to us. Like, whenever you come across these controversies, ask yourself first question is, is this a primary belief? If it is, then obviously, if you establish that it has to be something, it's, it's a creedal point. So we'll do this in Aqidah, inshallah, I'll teach you guys. If it's a creedal point, someone denies it, yes, then there's claims to um, do takfir on them. But generally speaking, if they go into details, like in the angels and the details about life after death and what happens in the grave, all these things, are, you find it, you, ha you find it details, but you don't like attack someone because you don't believe in details. So someone might say, I believe in the angels. He's a Muslim, she's a Muslim, but they might not believe in certain details. Then you look into the details of this, okay? So, and the Ummah uh, of the Prophet has are unanimous that we act upon hadith that are mutawatir. We've done this, okay? Um, so are you talking about books or are you talking about the hadith within the books? Ha books and the hadith within the books. Remember, remember one thing. The hadith in the books have different grades. So Bukhari doesn't all have mutawatir. He has ahad narrations as well. So this is what I'm going, this is what I'm getting at. Right, that you need to look. So Shah Sahib is saying, look at the books, which we've come across in the next 20 minutes or so. He's saying, look at the books. But the scholars are saying, no, we need to also look within each hadith as well. Right? But he's saying that because these books have been accepted, we take them as they are. And this is a controversy that he's been, we'll, maybe we'll do a separate lesson on it, but he's been 
taken to task for on this as well. He said these books are famous, and that's his criteria. His criteria is that the books are famous, and so you can imagine like certain groups today would do the same, do the same thing, don't they? The book it's in Bukhari, man. That's it. Let's take it, <laughs> you know. But what 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 the scholars would say? You know, we need to look in Bukhari. Yes, there are very, all of them are authentic, but they are different various levels. They do critique even in the Muwatta Imam Malik. You see now that that's been discussed as well. So his argument is if a book's been, if you take the book, if the book is famous, everybody accepts it, you take it. What the scholars of Hadith are saying, no, what we do is even within those books, we look at each individual narration and we discuss them as well. And that's why even today you'll find within Hadith, people have discussions, debates about the strength of the Hadith as well. Okay, okay so we've talked about Mutawatir. And the second level, we've done this as well, that ثُمَّ اسْتَفَادْ مِنْ تُرِكِ مُتَعَدِّدِنِ لَا يَبْقَى مَعَهَا شُبْهَةٌ then there are those that are well known and have uh, numerous lines of transmission. So they're not as famous as the, they're not as well known as the mutawatir, but they are mustafis or mashhur. These are like uh, hadith terminologies. Obviously, we did the Hanafi school terminologies; they're slightly different. Okay, but generally, there's no doubt that remains upon them. Okay, there might be small amount of doubt, and because remember we said if there's any doubt upon them, you can't use it as a, as a creedal point. It has to become less than mutawatir. Okay. Um, usually, they are they are hadiths that are legal scholars scholars have agreed upon. Yeah, so in these, to strengthen them, the legal scholars, um, there's so many that there's no doubt that remains about them in terms of the legal scholars, the fuqaha, this guy, you know. Okay, um, Shawulla also says that um, there are another category where scholars from Makkah, Medina, if they don't raise objection against them, they are also from this category as well. Okay. The reason they say that is um, that these are the places where the early Khalifs, the rightly guided Khalifs, established themselves, okay? And there were scholars in abundance in these two cities. So if it was, if, if, they, if they've acknowledged these hadith, and we know that they've been acknowledged, then that's fine. Right? That the Sahaba would have said, or the Khalif would have done something and crept, uh, stepped in, okay? Um, and then those that are known uh, across the Muslim world, they've just become famous. Uh, all over the Muslim world as well. Okay, so these are these are mutawatir, and then you have mashhur and mustafid. Shah Sab. Uh, this is this is just a broad category, and then he says um, there are those which are sound, sahih, uh, or hasan. So there's like another category. Okay, a third category which is sound or um, hasan, and then you can go into details about can you do amal on this. Okay, um, and the fourth category are those uh, which are weak, zayif. Mawdu, Mawdu are invented ones. There are books written on this. You get books that are just written on these topics. You can just pull them out and they tell you all the weak ones and the Mawdu ones. Okay. Munqati, Munqati means cut. The chain is cut somewhere. There's a problem there. Okay. Transpose, Maqloob. So there's been some sort of transposition going on. There's been some sort of mixture going on as well. Okay. Sometimes also we don't know who's narrated, so they might miss out. They won't. They might not mention who they've narrated from. Uh, or like there might be something in the Hadith which causes us. Uh, reason to question it, like it doesn't make sense or it contradicts something or something, okay? Um, and he says that فَلَا سَبِيلَ إِلَى الْقَوْلِ بِهِ That um, we can't accept them. Yeah. So these are four broad categories. Okay. Shah Sab then says that there's two things that he considers. This is really important. Number one is siha, accuracy. And the second thing which is particular to him, and this is where he gets a lot of controversy, is what I talked about is shuhra, reputation. Right? Can you see this? He's saying not only does it have to be sahih, but it also has to have a reputation. The hadith scholars would say, and this is where he gets attacked, he says, well, no, we don't say something. Just because something is famous doesn't mean it's sahih. All of all the books in it are, all the hadith in that book are correct. Yeah. Lots of, thing, lots of, lots of things are famous, but it doesn't mean that this they are correct. This is what he said. Hadith is no, no, just this in the this one one yeah, this one don't make sense. Yeah, so I'll, I'll go through them now. So, number one <coughs> is accuracy. Okay, so he says, Fasihatu, uh, that the person who writes the book, he has the accuracy of the book can be judged by the author of a book, making a condition on themselves that they will in only include what's Sahih and Hassan in the book. Okay, so if they say to you that I've got this, would say it's correct. Okay. And he doesn't put any weak, etc. Hadith in there. Okay. 
and if they do include anything that's controversial they explain it they've got to explain it to you that look you know what i've included this hadith but it's got these particular issues in it okay um, because they've been honest about it they haven't hidden it okay so he gives the example of imam abu Dawood, imam tirmidhi that they, they've done this if you look at imam Dawood, imam abu Dawood's kitab imam tirmidhi he'll mention so sahi hassan and so forth yeah so they've they've been very clear about this so he says that if the authors if the authors obviously well known and he's made these claims then that's sufficient for us yeah um he's gone through now the second one which he which he particularly goes to is reputation so for him uh reputation is important like the reputation of the book i.e people have accepted that this book is authentic but he gets a lot of stick for that he doesn't mention it here but I've been thinking about and reading around it a little bit, and we can talk about it separately. Is that um, that if a book has become famous, like Imam Bukhari's book, then we take it as it is. Like that it's it's a book that we, we can accept. وَالشُّهْرَةُ أَن تَكُونَ الْحَهَادِيسَ الْمُسْكُورَةُ فِيهَا دَائِرَةٌ عَلَى أَسْنَتِ الْمُحَدِّسِينَ قَبْلَ تَدْوِينِهَا وَبَعْدَ تَدْوِينِهَا. That he's saying that um, people have accepted this book, um, and if people have accepted it, um, we take it as it is. Okay, so the book because widely circulated, it has multiple chains. Um, it's well known before the person who wrote the book uh, compiled them. Those hadiths were well known, and they're also well known <coughs> afterwards as well. Yes, so this is something else. Yeah. And then, then after the book is written, people carry on scrutinizing the book, clarifying it, taking masail out of it, and so forth. Okay. And then people are happy with the book as well. So it's become well famous now as well. And then the fuqaha come along and they derive rulings from this. Okay. So he 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 seems to be here saying that um, not only does the book have to be sahih, but it also has to be famous. Yeah. So he's he's made this crit. The re- now the problem is that the, the, some of the criticism is that when you say a book has to be famous, one of the problems then happens is that people start stop critiquing the book later on. It's famous. You know, like Imam Bukhari is written it, Imam Muslim is written it, so forth and so on. The book is famous, everybody has accepted it, we don't need to go into it. But as any scholar of hadith will tell you, you still have to go into the books themselves and start critiquing the hadith. So, the, so not every book in had, not you know, Imam Bukhari's kitab doesn't have every hadith as mutawatir in there. There are various gradings that takes place, there's discussions that takes place, Imam Muslim's book as well. So he says that one of the consequences, so the, the, critiques, the critics say that because he said that you just look at a book as famous, people in the subcontinent, generally speaking, generally speaking stop focusing on going into the chain of narration right and so we can debate that as well but some people also say that as we will see that his focus on books like the muwatta um, shows that he he focused not just on uh, hadith but he also looked at the amal uh, because imam malik's book was also a book that was used by the people of Medina to act upon so it's useful for acting upon as well okay um, so he says that when you find accuracy, uh, siha, and reputation, uh, shuhra of a book, um, he's going to put it in the first round. And in the first round, you'll find that he puts Muwatta, Bukhari, and Muslim. But he separates out Imam Muwatta separately. So he talks about the Muwatta separately. Okay? Um, and so they will be at the first round. Right? And obviously, as as you have weakness in shuhrat, as you have weakness in sihat, the books will have a lower rank. Yeah, but in the first rank, you have Imam, Muwatt, Imam Malik's Muwatta, you have Imam Bukhari's book, and Imam Muslim's book. Okay? So the highest rank belongs to the books that are mass transmitted, that, that have mass transmitted traditions. Then you are Mustafiz and Mashur, uh, and then you move your way down. Okay? Okay. But I have a I have an image here which I'm not going to go through right now. But the Hanafis have their own. Okay. But this is Shah Walilullah's uh, own discussion, and some other point in the future, inshallah, we'll go into some of the critiques of this as well. It's been heavily criticized his position, but we'll go into it some other point. So, so the G. Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, if you if you thought about it that way, if a book's famous, that's what I'm saying. If a book's really famous, does it really make yeah. that? Does it really make it correct? Right. So in our in our um, I'm sub- not saying Prophet wrong. I'm saying yeah, in our sub tradition, if you like, our sub tradition, uh, if you be very careful. But within our own tradition, some people would it's it's got fame. It's it's, fa- it's a famous book. I mean, many of our bookshelves sh- in our masjid after the Quran, you have Fazal Amal. I mean, who sees a Bukhari there? Who sees a Muslim there? Who sees a Muwatta? Who like so? I mean, and it's 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 held in very high esteem, and that's not a we're not criticizing the book, but we're saying that if we're going to use that argument, then this then then people are going to stop critiquing it. They're going to say, well, everybody's accepted this book. So if you're going to say Talaq al Ummah, the Ummah has accepted this book as true, that and we don't need to critique it anymore. What happens? Then you start. These are the things that happen, right? But if the, what the scholars are saying that no, any all of these books besides Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's books, you have to continue to look at the narrations and go through them. Okay, so he goes through Imam Muat, Imam. Uh, uh, he talks about the Muwatta in particular. We'll go through a separate discussion about some of the controversies like Alama Zahid Al Kausari has in particular for him, and some Indian scholars who responded as well. But I've talked briefly about before about the idea that um, because of this approach. Um, it's argued that the subcontinent scholars were weaker in, in, in this tradition of looking into Hadith criticism, generally speaking, yeah, as a consequence. So he talks about the Muwatta. Um, he says, according to scholars of Hadith, uh, and this is what's understood, that everything in the Muwatta is sound, sahih, not mutawatir, okay? Um, some, and some say there's no interrupted Hadith or munqatir Hadith, like there's no Hadith that doesn't reach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, and even if it doesn't, scholars have written other books which correct them out. So while, while Imam Malik has <coughs> uh, certain narrations where he says an'an or from so, from so forth or so forth or so on, he doesn't mention names, through other books, they've connected those other books. So they found who those missing links were and you find them. Okay? So this is something to bear in mind. Um, and in, in, because Imam Malik's book was written very, very early on, uh, you find three types of narrations. You have the, you have the Musnad. Then it's called Isnad. You have the Mars Mursal, which is there's it's been it's been connected to Prophet, but the person meaning the Prophet is, the Sahaba is not mentioned, or what's called the Balaghat. Balaghat basically means there are certain places where Imam Malik says, Balaghani, Balaghani, it's reached me, it's reached me. Yeah. I've heard this, it's reached me, this has reached me. Right? But he doesn't mention from where, from whom. So there's a really good book um, that it's in Arabic. Um, where there's some there's some discussion around four particular books, four put four, four particular hadith in the Muwatta that don't have that don't have a sanad. Yeah. And Ibn Salah he has a book called uh Wasal Al Balaga Al Arba'a Fil Muwatta. Wasal Balaga fi al Arba'a uh Al Arba'a fil Muwatta, like the four books. So he's done a, he's done, he's written like a uh, a paper if you like on it. Yeah. And he's concluded his his basic conclusion is that out of the four that don't have a isnad in the Muwatta, um, there's one which has the full wording, which is not authentic. So the f- it's not authentic. So there's one in there that doesn't have, it's not authentic. There's the second one, which has partial wording of it is not authentic. A third one, which has partial wording, which is sahih. And a fourth one, uh, which is which has partial wording, which is hasan. So there's four in there that are, that are qabili, uh, worth, worthy of consideration. So can you see this, that although Imam Shah Walullah is putting it up there, there's been, there's been critiques of it, right? So the Hadith scholars are saying, you know, we need to look at this. Okay, but because the Muwatta has reached such a high level, and it, I mean, it's not, we're not criticizing it. Alhamdulillah, it's a book that's been accepted, you know. Uh, how far out of how many? Sorry? How many books are there? I don't, I don't know the exact number. <coughs> I have to find out for you. Okay, but, but Imam Shafi'i has been reported as saying, um, that uh, it's the most authentic book after the book of Allah is the Muwatta. Th- but the response is obviously, when did he say that? Before <coughs> Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim. Right? So context is important. So some people, some, uh, some people say, oh, look, Imam Shafi'i said it's the most authentic book. What about Bukhari, Muslim? No, no, no. He said it. He was around before Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, of course. So obviously he's going to say that. So this is something to bear in mind as well. Okay. Um, so this is something to also I mentioned as well. Um, yeah. I 
to udělali s tím tím. Now, uh, there's, some other, there's, there's some other detailed discussions which I'm not going to go into about Mursal Rivayat, the ones that um, don't connect with the Prophet ﷺ because of Sahabi and so forth. We're not going to go into that. Um, and there's other discussions uh, which I won't go into as well around uh, his book has received a lot of attention as well. So a lot of scholars have written around uh, his book. Now, Shaullah here, here as well, this is worth pointing out. And this is something I discussed with a friend of mine yesterday. وَقَدْ صَنَّفَ فِي زَمَانِ مَالِكْ مُوَتَّعَتْ كَثِيرَةٌ Shah Walila says there's, there were a lot of Muwatta's written in the time of Shah Walila uh, Sorry, in the time of Imam Muwatta. Muwatta means something that's prepared. It, the word Wata means like something that's ready for you. So there were a lot of people who were writing similar books of, of in his time as well. Um, um, but Imam, Shah, Shah, uh, uh, Imam uh, Malik is decoded to have said to the effect that um, whatever is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain. And now when you say Muwatta, Generally, you're talking about the Muwatta Imam Malik. So every every everyone else has their books have sort of been lost to history, if you like. Um, but Imam Malik, when you say Muwatta, you mean mm-hmm. Imam Malik's book, right? Um, here, there's a, there's there's a something that's interesting. I've 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 looked in a few texts of the Hujja, and it seems to be um, I, I want to say this, this in a very respectful way. That so let me tell you what Shah Walila says. He says, "Muwatar kathiratun fi tafriri ahadisi wasala munqati." That there are many books that have been written, which look at, which go through the tafriri of the hadith of Muwatta. In other words, they've gone through each hadith and they've tried to tra- the transmitting. Okay, in the, in other words, trying to connect it back to Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he mentions some people, Ibn Abi Zib, Ibn Uyina, Al Thawri, and Muammar. He says this in his text. This is why he says that these these scholars in particular and others. They've written books which they look at the isnad <coughs> of the muwatta of Imam Malik. In other words, they've written the books. But what seems to have happened is that's not what's happened. These authors haven't written books on the takhrij, the hadith of muwatta, but they've written their own books. Does that make sense? So Shah Saab, from his Arabic, his text, he seems to be saying that they've done the takhrij of the hadith of muwatta. But when you look at these books, they're not doing that. They've written their own standalone books. So again, it gives strength to the argument that, you know, the Muwatta, um, you know, the Shuhrat argument, no, he, he, that's not actually what happens. Can you see where this argument is coming? Yeah. Um, so, I've, so I've written that more research needs to be done on this. Sorry? So why this is what he says. No, why is it that? He, Allah knows best. My husband is that. It's the way he read it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, or the way he understood it in his time. Mm-hmm. But these books are not. These books are not. Uh, are t- so what he says, وَقَدْ سُنِّفَتْ فِي زَمَانِ مَالِكْ مُوَتَّعَتْ كَثِيرَةٌ فِي تَخْرِيجِ أَحَادِيثِ There were many books written in the time. Uh, we were born, there were many books written in the time of Imam Malik, which did the, uh, uh, m- they, there were many muwatta that were written in the time of Imam Malik, which did takhrij of his hadith, hadithihi, his hadithi of his hadith. But when you look at these books, they're not doing takhrij of his hadith. Can you see? They they're, they're standalone books. Okay, so that's something that's that's just a side point. I mean, it's an academic point, but it's also worth noting. I mean, I asked a friend of mine to look into this, and he's looking into it. He says, you know, the the m- Mufti Said Palampuri says that this is Qabile. I feel said this is something that needs more research. So Mufti Said Palampuri also says this as well. I mean, to you guys, it's not a big difference, but to us people who are into scholarship, it's like it's a, it's an important point to d- if you're going to debate about this, this is something to bear in mind. Okay. Not so it's Yes, in 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 the in the it is. No, you say oh no. Yeah, not in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> anyway, the Shah Wal uh, Shah uh, Imam Malik's book is also very famous. Many people traveled far around the world to benefit from him. So I don't want to make it sound like it's some book that's not significant. It's a very significant book. Yeah, it's a very important book of Shah Walila, and this has obviously to do with his training in Makkah because he studied with Malik. <coughs> he's, he's written books on the the Muwatta as well and Musaffa. He's written his own book on the Maliki school, so he was definitely influenced by the Maliki school. If you sit with obviously scholars of certain tradition, you inshallah, if your intention is pure, you're going to be you're going to be sort of overwhelmed by them, or you're going to fall in love with their tradition. It's, it's natural, right? And so that's what mashallah has happened as well. And so there's also hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imam Tirmidhi mentions it. Now he says that a time will come, uh, yushiku and yazrib nas. 
that people will be the livers of camels. They'll, in other words, they'll be hastening to travel upon the camel. Um, they won't find anyone more knowledgeable in, this, in the science of hadith than and the alim of Medina. Obviously, the Prophet didn't mention him by name, but most scholars are of the view, or scholars are of the view that is Imam Mali. So this is what we call an Urdu patient guru. You know, the Prophet وسلم, foretold that a time would come where um, people would travel to Medina to benefit from the alim of Medina as well. And obviously, Imam Malik is famous. You know, he spent his time in uh, Medina during the long run. Um, the book also became very, very famous during his time. Uh, so in his own lifetime, usually a book becomes famous, generally speaking, after the authors passed on. So many books in Europe, for example, in the authors' time, they even controversial sometimes. They even get killed for it. <laughs> uh, they get burnt and so forth. But after they die, uh, the book becomes people start reading it, and they're like, oh. So sometimes you know your your work or your ideas might not re reach fruition in your lifetime, but later on, like Fazal Amal, mashallah, it received acceptance. So you know, in, in the sense of everybody reads it, mashallah, many people read it, um, or even like the Ihya Ulumuddin in in Spain, they were burning it. Imam Ghazali's book, they were burning it. You know, everybody celebrates. People celebrate the Ihya Ulumuddin in Imam Ghazali. Uh, what a beautiful book! But at some point in history, people were burning it. And that happens in Europe as well. Many philosophers, their books were burnt, but now their ideas are like promulgated and everybody's following their ideas as well. But Imam Malik, mashallah, he's singular in some ways. <coughs> in many ways, that his, his book became famous in his own lifetime. And there's a famous story of Harun Rashid, you know, who wanted his book to become like the book, the standard book of, of, of the Islamic world. And he didn't want that. This is because of the humility of Imam Malik. He said, no, no, people are used to People are used to what they're doing in, you know, in this, in, 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 in the north part, in the south part, in Egypt, whatever. Why do you want to cause fitna? So, you know, this idea of univer universalization of your particular manhaj is very dangerous. You know, we talked about this before, that if people have a certain practice, and it's not against the sharia, it's not bid'ah, it's not shirk, but it's, it's, a, it's a different flavor, it's a different interpretation, but it's within orthodoxy it's within the sunni orthodoxy and it's working for them and they're doing it let them be why are you trying to force your islam on a community that might have been doing it for centuries right because that's what happens right you get people that study abroad mashallah in certain parts of the world and they come back to the community and they say oh this is haram and this is this and this and that and, this and they cause fitna in the community right uh, it's it's got to be done with uh, hikmat and wisdom yeah there might be issues but you can't change people because people, uh, when when they when they have ada when they're used to something, it's very hard to change them. And when they when something strange to them, they become your enemy. Yeah, what's that famous poem? Um, that line couplet, um, like what's the I can't remember what it is. But you know, people have a habit of becoming enemies of something that's new, right? So you have to sort of, you know, win people over and take time and so forth. So anyway, this is his ikhlas as well. I mean, he, he had a state that could have supported him, but he was like, no, I'm going to... And it's also interesting as well that um, Harun Rashid, his children used to study with him. Right? So, you know, imagine, imagine the, the leader of the Muslims or the leader of the community coming and sitting with the ulama. How many, how many committee members do this today? Or how many people who run big, big institutions, right? Sit at the feet of the ulama and study hadith with them. Big businessmen, you know, Faisal Wale, uh, people who have fame. How many of them sit at the feet of the ulama? Harun Rashid, famous Harun Rashid, with his children. What tabir he gives to his children that he would sit at the feet of Imam Malik, rahimahullah. Once there's a story as well, I don't know how authentic it is. He was leaning on a pillar, like, <coughs> you know, like, kind of like this, and listening to hadith. Yeah. Imam Malik, Imam Malik, they say that when he would, before he would talk, he would look at the audience. On to who's here, who's not here, and then um, he noticed that he was he was leaning on a pillar. So he reprimanded the the, the khalif. Yeah, who can reprimand the khalif today? You know, this the next day that person replaced. Then there's some other imam there. Yeah, so he said uh, the knowledge uh, that you go to knowledge, knowledge doesn't come to you. Uh, the tarbiyat, the, the, this is the ulama that they had because they were very pious, and Allah because they were very parish guy and they were naked and they practiced their knowledge. When they said things, it, it, it struck all fear into the hearts of people. 
Uh, so this is Imam Malik, rahimahullah. There's many, many other things you can read. Um, if you can read Arabic, uh, Sheikh Zakaria, rahimahullah's commentary, the Awdazul Masalik on the Muwatta. He's written a commentary on the Muwatta, the Awdazul Masalik. It's a very famous book as well. And so it be the, fam the book fam uh, became very, very famous in the time of um, Imam Malik as well. Okay, And the other thing was, um, it also has a lot of respect. The Muwatta Imam Malik, it's, it's, I mean, Imam Muhammad has a Muwatta as well, the student of Imam, mm -hmm. uh, Imam Abu Hanifa. Remember I said he went to study with him as well. So he's very unique, mashallah, he has that. Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik. Because the, the scholars <coughs> travel all around the world, uh, all around the Muslim world to benefit from scholars. And this is something that, you know, if Allah gives you tawfiq and gives me tawfiq and gives us time and finance, that we should try and benefit from ulama. Nowadays, it's very formalized. You study in an institution for six years, seven years, and that's it, finished. Khalas, you know, I've got my sanad, I've got my title, and I don't need to study anymore, and everybody should respect me. Uh, no, what, what we should be doing, and this is including us, me, I'm included in this. MashaAllah, Allah's given you time to study Islam from different ulama, different shuyukh, learn Arabic. We talked about Arabic before as well, you know, to get a good grasp of the deen and so forth. So this is the, gr uh, this is the, um, this is Imam uh, Malik. I briefly touched upon him, right? But I've also touched upon some of the controversies Shah Waliullah Dehlawi, rahimahullah, has faced subsequent to this. Maybe on our group, I'll share more details about this. Ulama uh, <coughs> Zahid Kawthari, rahimahullah, he's a very strong Hanafi uh, <coughs> in Ottoman times. And he's had some strong words. Some Indian scholars have said things as well. <coughs> Other scholars have tried to interpret this as well. But because he argued his claim for the book, that's, take the book that's famous, and these books are famous. They said, well, as a re as a, as an outcome of that, people become less scrupulous in the traditions themselves because they said that these books are accepted, so we'll just take them at face value. And you see this repeating today, right? What do people do? They say the book is really famous, Imam Bukhari. Of course, it's a famous book, but does that mean every hadith we act upon, right? Does that mean we act upon every hadith of Muslim? No, we don't. We have to look into the each hadith and scrutinize them and compare them with other hadith and try and make sense. You know, nowadays people share, mashallah, hadith. And for virtue, for fazail, it's okay. But when you're doing fiqh, when you're trying to do amal on the hadith, you can't just take one single hadith. You have to look at the strength of the hadith. You have to look at, are there other hadith that might contradict it? What did the sahaba say about this? You know, all the things that we've been discussing, right? Can you find other hadith? And then that's why you have the fuqaha. What do the muhaddithin do? There's two special fields, right? Muhaddithin look at the hadith, they, they grade it, they scrutinize it, they, they look at each chain of narration, they try and find any defects within any defects and they'll mention them. That's all they do. So they label them. They basically put a label on the medicine and then or on the, the ingredients. And uh, what happens? The fuqaha come along and they make the medicine. They say, okay, you need this much of this much, this, this, this is what this means, this is what that means. This is how we reconcile. We have two, five, six, seven hadiths that seem to be contradicting itself. How do we make sense of this? And this is why you have the four schools. The four schools do all the... Um, uh, the, the brain work for you if you like and they do all the intelligent stuff and I'm not denigrating the hadith scholars but the four schools what they do is they make sense of it all they're like okay this is what it means this is what it means and this is why uh, you by now studying with me I think you've understood that you can't just take a hadith from a book and do amal upon it yeah you have it's much more intricate than that uh, but because people don't study it this way the way we've done it alhamdulillah um, you have a lot of fitna in our communities Right, because they don't study history and look at these things. So anyway, these these are some of the things about Imam uh, Bukhari, Imam uh, Malik. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, give us all the tawfiq, inshallah, to benefit from this. Um, we're going to stop now and then we'll continue next week.